Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Retro Select, a series of quick looks at retro games I feel like playing. Now, for the next couple of episodes, we're going to take a look at some ZX Spectrum games. The ZX Spectrum is a British institution in terms of home computers and video gaming and that sort of thing. But to be honest, it's a platform I'm not super familiar with because I grew up with Atari 8-bit and during the 80s there was intense rivalry between uh, the various different platforms. So as an Atari 8-bit fan, I was conditioned to regard the Spectrum as the enemy. So I don't have a huge amount of familiarity with its library. So I thought this series would be a good opportunity opportunity to correct that over time. So over the course of the next couple of episodes we're going to take a look at a few Spectrum games. Starting with Mad Nurse for today. This was a 1987 release from Firebird and it was a budget price release on their £1.99 range. It's a largely forgotten game but it was reviewed in issue 67 of Computer and Video Games where reviewer Paul described it as probably the sickest game I've ever played. Don't buy it. All because of the fact that it revolves around dead babies as you'll see. Conversely, issue 27 of Computer Gamer rated it 74% and praised its arcade-style simplicity and how it was non-destructive, aside from all the dead babies. But anyway, let's go play Mad Nurse. Okay, here we are with Mad Nurse from Firebird on the ZX Spectrum. So, if you've not come across the Spectrum before, uh, most things that you would play on the Spectrum would start with some sort of menu like this. I'm going to burp. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> most most games on the spectrum would start with a menu like this and the reason for this is that um, unlike the Atari 8-bit and the Commodore 64 joystick controls weren't um, necessarily a given on the spectrum you could get joysticks for the spectrum um, but a lot of people would play spectrum games with just a keyboard and so most spectrum games would offer keyboard controls by default um, and joystick controls were sort of something of a luxury because depending on the model of the spectrum you had you might need a special interface to plug into your spectrum in order to use a joystick uh, whereas everyone had a keyboard so we're going to play with the keyboard for that authentic feel just set up some controls and here we are mad nurse one thing you'll quickly get used to with ZX Spectrum games is psychedelic, epilepsy-inducing title screens. And often multiple title screens, like we see here. Uh, hello and welcome to Mad Nurse by Firebird Software. Produced by Software Creations. And coded by Peter Goff. From the Commodore Original by Simon Pick. Right, let's play. Uh, press S to start or enter to change. Let's go for the middle difficulty level because the, the early stages of this game are quite easy. Uh, so we don't want to run on for too long. But we'll go for a problem. So that starts us as nurse number one, Brenda Bumwasher. In ward number 16. First level of this game is eight, by the way. I don't know why. But uh, there you go. All right. So your aim in this game is, as Brenda Bumwasher or her subsequent colleagues, uh, you have to protect the babies from dying. So you do that by wandering over to them and pushing up to pick them up. And then while you're carrying one, you wander over to a cot, which is the blue thing, and you drop them in there by pushing down. And that really is all you have to do in this game. But as you progress, it gets faster, and more intense, there's more babies to deal with at once. And the main the main hazard is the babies reaching the lift shaft at, at the far end where they will die. But also you'll see on the top level those two plug sockets as well. If a baby reaches the plug sockets, they will electrocute themselves as well. So you need, really need to prioritise the ones who are getting dangerously close to those plug sockets. So it's interesting that this said um, it was a port from the Commodore original. Uh, because from what I can make out, 
this game is more well known as a spectrum game so the the cvg review that i quoted in the intro for example was based on the spectrum version and i think part of the reason for that is that uh this is a british game this is a budget price british game oh no oh no Now, you, you can actually make up to three mistakes in a stage before you get fired. So, uh, yeah. Brenda Barmosh is fine for the minute. Yeah, so so the um, the reason I think this is more associated with the Spectrum than the Commodore 64 is because it is a British budget price release. And if ever there was a platform associated with British budget price releases, it was the ZX Spectrum. Because the computer itself was very cheap. But also, the majority of its library came on cassettes, was released at a budget price, and was produced by British developers. So, um, yeah, that explains a lot, really. So games like this would have primarily sold on the Spectrum. And like I said, there's all sorts of reasons for that. Um, main one being the, the low cost of the computer in the first place. The second one being that um floppy disks as a medium never really took off on the spectrum there was a disk drive for the spectrum later in its life um one of the amstrad models from when amstrad took over manufacturing of the computer from sinclair um that had a disk drive but it was a, a really weird disk drive it was, a, it was a three inch disk drive um not a three and a half inch disk like was a lot more common on the 16-bit computers at the time like the ST and the Amiga now it was a, th a three inch disk drive and if you've never seen a three inch disk or you didn't know a three inch disk existed then well now you know why there weren't very many Spectrum games on disk the other reason is that um, loading from tape on the Spectrum wasn't anywhere near as inconvenient as it was on some other platforms so certainly when compared to the atari 8-bit in particular the atari 8-bits um, input output system was very very slow at reading data from tapes it had an extremely slow bit rate and so games on atari 8-bit could often take upwards of half an hour to load so like sort of the most notorious examples were things like um like the port of gauntlet that we've seen on the atari a to z series the take version of that took something like 37 minutes to load which is ridiculous um whereas your average game on the spectrum loading from tape would take maybe three or four minutes at most some games would be multi-load affairs where you'd have to load each level in separately. But even then, the loading wasn't super slow. Now you might notice while I've been playing this, um, occasionally the screen's been going slightly darker and all the babies have been frozen, frozen. That is me using the gas that you have. That stuns them all for a few seconds and allows you a bit of time to manage them so if you have a bunch of babies excuse me if you have a bunch of babies closing in on a plug socket making use of the gas is a good idea because chances are yeah as you can see it's in many cases you won't be able to reach them in time i think we're going to lose a life any moment Well, we did what we could. You have been fired for neglect. <coughs> Introducing nurse number two, Tracy Totekla. <coughs> yeah, so so as I say, so it's so a budget price releases in the UK were primarily associated with the spectrum because it was a low-cost computer uh it was easy to load stuff from tape um tape-based games were distributed all over the place even in places that you wouldn't expect to see computer software today places like um i think i mentioned this before 
um, on one of the Atari series, but we have a a chain of shops in this country called Boots. And Boots is primarily known as a pharmacy these days. It's a, it's a sort of large-scale pharmacy, so it's a place where you can also get stuff like makeup and um, things like sort of holiday equipment, suntan lotion, sunglasses, that sort of thing. Um, many of them have opticians and stuff, but back in the mid well i guess early to mid 80s oh no two dead at once back in the 80s um boots tended to be a pharmacy downstairs and then upstairs it would have more sort of general household goods and various things including electronics and so boots would often sell home computers and home computer software and that sort of thing uh, and so you pop into Boots and you'd be able to buy games for your Spectrum. And the same was true for other places that you might not necessarily expect to see computer games. Places like WH Smith's, which is basically a newsagent and a stationery store. But yeah, again, they sold computer games. Oh no. And when you think about it, that was a genius bit of marketing because it meant that when a kid was out with their mum and dad getting dragged around the shops and getting dragged around Boots or WH Smiths or whatever, it meant that they had something that they could look at and then badger their parents to buy while their parents were buying boring things like pens and printer paper and that sort of thing. Which is genius. I don't know why we don't still do that sort of thing. <laughs> like I, I certainly remember on numerous occasions being in WH Smith's and for the brief period when they actually sold Atari games as well as Spectrum games I'd be like yeah well you've been dragging me around the shop so why don't you spend two pounds on getting me uh, getting me a game on cassette it's only fair <laughs> But yeah, the other thing is, uh, as well as sort of badgering parents for doing things as well, the budget price of a lot of these games meant that kids could pick them up with their pocket money as well. And so, like, a lot of the time we've talked about the rising price of video games over the years. £1.99 was still not a huge amount of money in 1980X. It's a feasible amount of money that a kid could have had for pocket money for the week. And so a Spectrum owning kid could have wandered into WH Smith's on the way home from school, picked up a copy of Mad Nurse and enjoyed some wholesome dead baby action for as, as long as they desired. You know what, I quite like this game. It's pretty simple, but it's effective. It's got that sort of arcade style feel to it. There's a definite arcade risk versus reward thing going on as well. It kind of reminds me slightly of um, Tapper. Obviously, the subject matter is very different, but sort of the the idea of having to manage constantly incoming strings of stuff <laughs> it reminds me of Tapper quite a bit. And the pacing's quite nice. It's not too it's not too hard immediately, but there is a, a bit of a challenge there. Like I say, I have tried this once before and the, the easy levels are very easy. So you can you can work your way through those and um sort of have a very gentle introduction to the game. But if you start at the normal stage like we've done here, um you're confronted with a decent challenge that isn't certainly isn't insurmountable right from the beginning.
which is good. One thing I haven't talked about yet, which is sort of a identifying characteristic of the spectrum, is you'll notice as the nurse sprite and the baby sprites are moving across the screen, you'll see that they're changing colour. Um, now that is to do with the spectrum's notorious attribute clash, which is where it had great difficulty having sort of layers of different things on screen at once. So basically color was applied to an area of the screen rather than to a sprite. And so when a sprite walks in front of an area of the screen that it has a color assigned to it. Pick him up. No, he's dying. Never mind. I think we're going to get fired again. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so, so when a sprite walks in front of an area of the screen that is assigned to a different colour, you'll see that the sprite takes on those colours. It's a very similar effect to what you get um, in the old arcade games that made use of coloured overlays on the screen, except rather than being an overlay on the screen, it's actually programmed into the computer itself. It's saying this part of the screen must be this colour. Now, it was seen as a mark of mastery of the ZX Spectrum if you could avoid colour clash as much as possible. Because one, when handled badly, it's very obtrusive. And there's lots of examples of Spectrum games out there where it is handled badly, and you end up with very, very flickery graphics. You end up with graphics that look like they're inverted, or graphics where there's sort of flickering backgrounds and sprites as they move across things there's yeah there's there's a lot of examples of it being done very badly um in the grand scheme of things this game is actually ha oh no those two babies are gonna die <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> oh dear um, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, this, this game is actually handling it quite well. Um, because it, it's not causing any flicker or anything like that. It just it just means that the sprites are changing colour. And to be honest, by the point this game came out, people would be well familiar with that as sort of a distinctive part of the Spectrum's aesthetic. So it might look a bit weird today. But people would have been perfectly accustomed to this back when this was current. Now, this this is one of the things that I that why I find looking at different platforms so interesting because back at this point in video game history, the different platforms were so markedly different from one another and they had these unique quirks like color clash and so on like like color clash here is not a thing on the atari 8-bit it's not a thing on the commodore 64 but it's a defining part of the way that spectrum games look and feel and i find that really interesting from a modern perspective because these days you look at a game on different platforms and it looks the same because the, the whole point of the porting process these days is to provide parity between platforms as much as possible. But back in these early days of home computing, the emphasis was very much on playing to the platform's strengths and making use of the platform's unique capabilities rather than pick him up thank you um rather than trying to make them look identical between different platforms and so that meant that spectrum games always looked like spectrum games commodore 64 games always look like commodore 64 games atari 8-bit games always look like atari 8-bit games and so on and i like that yes back in the day it was sometimes frustrating to feel like you did not have the quote unquote best version of a game
But these days, I think those differences between different versions of a game are absolutely fascinating. Because in a lot of cases, they really highlight the creativity of programmers in working within these limitations and really showing how it was possible. Oops. Really showing how it's possible to make the best possible use of what you've got available to you. We're doing all right, but it is getting a bit tricky. It's getting a bit trickier. Ward number 23. So yeah, the difficulty settings in this do not affect sort of the, the difficulty of the game as a whole. All they affect is what level you start on. So like I say, on the easiest level, you start on level eight for some reason. Um, on the normal level we started on it was what 16 and then i think 24 is where the hard level starts and uh, as you can see it is starting to get a lot trickier now so there's a lot more stuff happening on screen at once i think the babies are moving slightly faster as well excuse me into your nose and uh yeah the whole thing is just generally a lot more stressful which is exciting <laughs> I said we have been playing this game for 20 minutes now which to me is the sign of a successful game because i haven't really noticed that time passing by it's a simple game but it's it's a game that I, i'm enjoying i'm enjoying the experience of this i don't know how interesting it is to watch probably not that interesting but hopefully my uh, commentary has been making up for that at least slightly but no in terms of actual gameplay this is very engaging this is very enjoyable it's a very simple but effective arcade style game. And it's actually something I can see myself picking up outside of this recording session and just playing a bit to go for some high scores or whatever. I said the one downside I think there is to this game is that the the randomized layout of this levels can sometimes screw you over a bit so the plug sockets in particular if the plug sockets appear right at the start of a floor that kind of puts you in a very difficult situation Ooh, excuse me just adjusting my seating position yeah that can put you in a very difficult situation because it means that you you sort of have to use your gas to stun the babies because otherwise you simply won't get to them in time to rescue them. But you roll the dice, those are the chances you take. And for every level that's difficult to complete, you have ones that are fairly straightforward. And you'll notice that you, you get an extra gas back for every level you complete. So if you have a string of levels that are easy to complete, you can actually sort of stockpile your gas quite nicely so in situations like this where I need to rush over and get this little dude I can gas him out and then put him away I feel a tremendous fart brewing so if that happens to slip out at any point I can only apologize <laughs> the 
it's it's there it's just it's just waiting it's that horrible feeling where you can just feel it sitting there like like it's solid and it's just waiting it yearns to be released but you cannot release it because you are recording gameplay of a zx spectrum game from the mid 80s It's my own fault for being so good at this game. If I wasn't so amazing at madness, I could finish this video right now and fart like the storms and no one would mind. No, no, here we are on board number 25. Oh no, I think we're in trouble with this level layout though. Because as you can see down at the bottom, we've got plug sockets right at the start of the floor, which is not an optimal arrangement. Because as you can see, sometimes you simply can't get to them in time. Still, natural selection and all that. Yeah, I'm not going to reach those in time. So I think our game might be over. Oh no, no, we're still it. We're still hanging in there. Just about hanging in there. Well, we could be in trouble now, though. Because those are a lot of babies approaching that lift shaft. We might be all right. And they're being caught in their animations there. That's giving us time to retrieve them. Oh no. Now it's all over. Now it's all over. There we go. You have been fired for neglect. I like how the birth's place is just a shed. <laughs> oh no, there's another nurse. I thought there were only three, but there's four. And they still need to fart. <sighs> the trials and tribulations I put myself through for you people. I say my my boiling stomach aside, I'm having a good time in this game. <laughs> it's very much got that uh, compelling arcade style quality to it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ward number 26. Come on. Hurry up. Oh dear. I don't think I'm going to get to those bottom ones in time.
No, well, sorry kids. You never had a chance. Panic! Oh, this is all getting a bit intense now. Oh no. Oh no. I think. Is it all over? Game over! Well! <laughs> that was quite the thing, wasn't it? That was Mad Nurse from Firebed. I enjoyed playing that. That's a, that's a good little game, actually. Uh, worth a try. I'm glad I, I gave that a go. I, I picked that purely by random out of these sort of archive ZX Spectrum games that I've got. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I gave that a go because it's good fun. So give it a try for yourself if you fancy it. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.